más. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, yes, things are happening. If you haven't received a newsletter, you're more than welcome to take one. We have them here. There's no charge. Amen. Jesus paid the price for us already. <laughs> he bought them all. <laughs> I want to say the joy of the Lord is my strength. And in his presence is fullness of joy. So we want to stay connected. Amen. Anyone come up to you and say, man, you're connected? Yeah, I'm connected. I'm connected to the most high. In the dark world of deception and evil, everybody wants to be connected to somebody with power. The problem is, is it's demonic power. Amen? So you and I are now connected to the one above, not the one beneath. And we want to stay connected. And one of the things the enemy tries to do is get us disconnected. Amen? So we become religious. Man, I ran into a guy yesterday. I'll tell you more about it later. <laughs> First turn of Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> Actually, he ran into me. <laughs> Glory! Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16. Galatians 5, 16. Isn't it a wonderful thing that you can stay in the joy of the Lord Amen. and not be miserable? Miserable is a fruit of open door to demonic activity. Do you ever hear someone say, well, I just got up on the wrong side of the bed. Baloney. There is no wrong side of the bed. <laughs> if either you're hitting the wall or you're hitting something, if you're, you know... There is no wrong side of the bed. Has anybody got it? Amen. You're either in the joy of the Lord or you're in the flesh. Amen. <laughs> One or the other. There is no in between. There's no gray area. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, it says something powerful. It says, I say then what? Walk, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. You can go home now. Amen. <laughs> That's it. I mean, think about it. There's the answer. Everybody wants to know, man, I don't get it. No, this is it. Walk in the, walk in the flesh, and you're going to reap corruption. Walk in the spirit, and you reap life. It's real simple. Amen. So the enemy's always trying to get you to walk in the flesh, sow in the flesh. He always, listen, people begin to focus more on them, their pains, their sorrows, their woes, as me's, even their sicknesses. When Jesus showed up, what was he trying to get to people to do? Look at him. That's called refocus. We must look at him, not at anything else. Everybody goes through something. Amen? Amen. Amen. Welcome to go through something. <laughs> it's called the world of go through something. <laughs> That's why when you're going through something, you want to go through it. You don't want to stay there. And the only way to go through it is to see Jesus because he's the only way out. Amen. That's it. So he gives us the, the formula. He gives us the answers. But so many times people just ain't listening or they refuse. They're allowing their circumstances to overtake them Amen. and have dominion. Amen. And you can't allow that. See, success is taking dominion. It's taking territory has nothing to do with anything else. Victory in Christ is the most important thing. Everybody goes through it. It's a part of your training. Have you ever heard anybody gone through boot camp? You know you got to go through it, and you can't wait to get out. But you know what you do in boot camp? You submit. You don't try to figure everything out. In fact, don't you dare question the officer that's telling you to do 25 push-ups. Because you'll do 50 and more. So God brings you through. He, it's a training process. 
We are in the training process. The earth is nothing but a training camp for an eternal position in heaven. But we can't entangle ourselves in the stuff of this world to overtake us. We must constantly focus on the arena of who Christ is, what he's done for me and you, and Christ in you on a constant level. So, he gives us the answer. I say, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh does what? Lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So the, you do not do the things that you wish or that you feel. Amen. Or even that you think. Amen? Amen? All right, let's go a little further now. We got that down. But if you are led by the spirit... You're not under the law of sin, death, hell, and the grave, you know. Now, the works of the flesh are what? Evident. He's going to tell you. These are evident. In other words, if you don't see them, everyone else does. Amen. And the first one, he says, is adultery, right? Amen. Fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. Come on, speaking with me. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and alike, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. So that you must, be one of the things that you must, I, you and I must constantly do is examine ourselves. What's your own fruit? Quit examining someone else's fruit unless you've examined yours first. So you examine your fruit. You, one of your fruits is your, what's your attitude? What's your motive? What are your intentions? we to examine these things. Why? You want to find out what's influencing you. Because if your intentions your attitude, your motives are not pleasing to God. It means you've been disconnected. Amen? All right, let's go a little further. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. What's the first one? Love. God is love. That's the first fruit. And love is not a feeling. It's a choice. If you're looking for a lovey feeling, you'll end up having a lusty feeling. Love is a choice. In fact, the word never explains of love being a feeling. God is love. He paid the price. Amen? The kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's love. Does everybody get it? Peace, joy, and righteousness is in the Holy Spirit. That's love. Okay? So he says the first fruit is love. What's the second one? Joy. Joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, is, this is how you know whether you're connected or disconnected. The third one is long-suffering. Are you willing to go through it and maintain love and joy? Amen. Uh, don't answer. <laughs> so the first one is what? Love. The next one is joy. What's the next one? Peace, long-suffering, woohoo! kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Don't quit. Amen. Don't quit what? Love, joy, and peace. Amen. Gentleness. Uh-huh. That's called forgiveness. Self-control over your flesh. Against such there is what? There's no law. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its what? Passions and desires. Wow. Now, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become what? Conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Whoa. Provoking. How many of y'all know that demons love to come and provoke you? Amen. They provoke you. They irritate you. They try to get you to a place where you're willing to accept enticement and temptation. That's their job. Amen? 
So understand that the law is the law of death, hell, and grave according to the law of sin. You are no, are no longer under that. It's condemnation. It's judgment from God. It's wrath of God. If you continue that way. But we're not under that if we're walking according to the Spirit. Amen? Now, again, according to that, if we're walking not according to the Spirit, then we've been become separated and disconnected from the presence of the Lord and don't even know it. See, many people get disconnected and have no idea that they've been disconnected because they're so busy. They've been so distracted. They have no idea. So we're to live, walk, and be led by the Spirit to overcome the presence of evil, of influence. And what does he do? He's a provoker. He'll provoke you until you finally give in. And one of the first things he wants you to give in to is offense. Amen. Offense. Conceit. Envy. Jealousy. Anger. Vengeance. Then he brings you to transgression, iniquity, and you're in the flesh, and now you're going to reap corruption. Amen? Because if you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. He's always trying to put in an individual in the place of a wicked character. See, your old man is the wicked character. Amen. Your new man is the righteous character. Amen. So if he can get you uh, to sow in the flesh, he can get you to reap corruption. He's always trying to get me and you, he's trying to provoke me and you to disarm the divine nature yeah. and to pick up the old man again. And the old man reacts where the new man responds. Yeah. There's a difference. Amen? Go to Psalm 64. So do you think we need to pay attention to these things? Amen. That's what's self-examining yourself all the time. Gosh, my. In other words, if the Lord is truly before you, and this is what King David talked about, he said, I always, I always set the Lord before me. If he's truly before you, then you have the fear of the Lord, the reverence of God. Then you're not going to do things that you know that are displeasing to him. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. But he's always trying to get us to a level of perfection, isn't he? Amen. In Psalm 64, in verse 1, let's speak it together, please. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in what? Evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. We have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of a man are what? Deep. What was he doing? He was putting himself, his, this was a prayer. He was praying from what? From rescue, from evil influence. He was expressing what's happening. He could sense that there was being arrows shot at him. He can sense that he was being provoked. And he was saying, Lord, I need your rescue on this. See, he put himself to prayer. He refocused himself not on the circumstances, he explained his, he acknowledged his circumstances, but he put himself to the Lord for the way of escape. Does everybody get it? And this is something that you and I must do all the time. Every word that comes out of your mouth, you must grab and examine. Every thought that is released, you must grab and examine. That's where it says, take these thoughts into captivity. Everything you and I do, motive, everything, we must grab and and examine everything. Why? Is it a pleasing to you, Lord, or is it displeasing to you? Everything. Go to Psalms 11. Again, I've said this before. There used to be, everybody used to wear, what would Jesus do bands? 
Did you notice that conviction of the Holy Spirit removed all those, what would Jesus do? Being as they wear them around the wrist. People don't want to look at them no more. Amen. What would Jesus do? Gosh, he wouldn't do that, man. Let me get this thing out of here. <laughs> what would Jesus do? We need to have a tattoo across our head. What would Jesus do? That way, if we didn't see it, everybody else, then you can see it on everybody else. Gosh, talk about conviction. If everybody had a, 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 a thing across, what would Jesus do? How about, are you acting like Jesus? <laughs> Is this the character of Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 11, verse 1. Psalm 11, verse 1. Let's speak it. In the Lord I what? Put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked do what? They bend the bow. They make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. Now, that means you know it or you don't know it. You don't know it. You don't know it. So you've got to maintain the full armor of God. You've got to stay connected. Why? Because then the arrow cannot penetrate. Verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. So God sees the arrow coming at you. Do you understand? The only thing that protects you from the arrow is called the shield of faith. That means connected. But the Lord's going to allow certain things to happen. Why? Because he's going to test you. The devil will challenge you. God will test you. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked, he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. His what? Countenance. That means his character. His what? Character. Whoa. He was praying, Lord, man, I'm being provoked by this secret influence. <laughs> I can't see it, but I can sense it. The enemy's always trying to set you up. That's what he does every single day from the moment you get up. Even he tries to set you up in your dreams. Amen. Psalm 50. So he's trying to get you into a place a wickedness. Does everybody get it? Amen. Flesh is wicked. It's wicked. It's a wicked character. In verse 16. Psalm 50, verse 16. Everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together. But to the wicked, God says, uh-oh. What right have you to declare my statutes? Listen, when you and I fall into a wicked character without repenting and getting out, this is how the Lord looks at it. He says, don't you dare. Until you straighten yourself up, don't you talk about me. But to the wicked, God says, what right do you have to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate what? Instruction. What's the instruction from? The word of God. And cast my words behind you. In other words, just forget everything and get in the flesh and just go off. Come. Flesh outs. That's what they're called. When you saw a thief, you consented with him. And have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to what? Evil. And your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother or sister. And you slander your own mother's children. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought that I was approving of these things. You thought that I thought like you did. You thought that I was altogether like you. Wrong. But I will rebuke you, and I will set them in order before your eyes. 
Now consider this, you who forgot God's ways, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Offer, whoever offers praise glorifies me. But to him who orders his what? Conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. He who orders his conduct, that means Christ-like character. This is, God is trying to get us to what we call a third level of life. There are three levels. And in, in, in every level, same thing, it's all established with the tabernacle. Everything revolves around the tabernacle as we talked before. There's the outer court holy place and most holy place. There's the third level of death. It's called mastering your death. Amen? There's a third level of conduct. It's mastering the conduct of Christ. It's Christ's character. So you have dominion over it. Amen? So when he says ordering your conduct aright, this means mastering his or her conduct. It is a place where you and I desire to reach what we call the third level or the master's level. Everyone say master's level. Ah, what a wonderful thing. The master's level. They got all these master's events and tournaments and golf things and whatever, but they're really not master's. There's only one master. Everyone say master's level. That's the name of today's teaching. The master's level. Praise God. This is not a sport, although you could call it a sport if you like chasing and hunting demons. Praise God. <laughs> What's your sport? I love to remove devils. Demon Slayer. In fact, we have a car named the Demon Slayer. <laughs> Woohoo! Philippians 3. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3. The master's level. We thrive to reach the master's level. Philippians 3 verse 7. Let's speak it together. But what things were gained to me, these are what? Is anybody there yet? Philippians 3. It's right after Philippians 2. <laughs> it's actually before Philippians 4. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Did I say 16? Thank you. Amen. Philippians 3, 7, right after... 3 6. <laughs> but what things were gained to me, these I have counted what? Lost for what? Christ. Woohoo! Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. So why are you going through suffering? To lose everything. Amen. To lose you. Amen. That's what suffering's about. You mean I got to go through this stuff to lose me? Yep. It's part of training for raining. And count them as what? Rubbish that I may what? Gain Christ. Ah, reaching the master's level. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? Know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. See, that comes up uh, multiple times. Being conformed to his what? Mastering your own death. If by any means I may attain the, to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained it or am already perfected, but I do. I press on. 
that I may lay hold of that which is Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and doing what? <clears throat> Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the what? Upward call. That upward call is called the master's level. The upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Whoa. Therefore, let us all, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the what? Same mind. The upward call is thriving for the master's level of like-mindedness with the character of Christ. That's what we thrive for. That's why we suffer. That's what we're going for. That's why we don't quit. We keep going. We're willing to see counsel, correction, direction, chastisement, kicking a buck, slapping the head, whatever it takes to keep going and keep going until there is no more left of us. No more. To everything that we reach, there is complete trust and confidence in him. Everything. 1 Peter chapter 5. Reaching the master's level. It's an upward call. That's why Jesus prayed three times, you remember? First Peter chapter five. He had to he had to go through each level. He had to breach each level so that he could die. Come on, think about it. Think about this for a second. If you knew that you were going to be tortured, you knew that they were going to rip your beard out, you knew that they were going to whip you with basically hooks, and then you knew that they were going to put spikes through your wrists and through your feet and they were going to mock you and they were going to do all kinds of things and you were going to allow it you definitely have to die amen. <laughs> amen think about this you definitely have to die in fact there ain't a person in this room that could do it we'd be kicking and screaming and trying to wave of escape believe me i take out as many people as I could before they tried to do it as me I'm going, you're coming. <laughs> I'm going up, you're going down. <laughs> Hallelujah. But only Jesus, only God could do that. <laughs> but it was the character of Christ. It was the divine nature. He was filled, perfected. He had no sin in him. <laughs> he took the sin for me and you. And then while he's on the cross, check this out. After he's hanging there for a while, nearly suffocating. Because that's what hanging on the cross did to them. And if they didn't die of suffocation, they broke their legs. What does he say? Forgive them. I mean, snap. Come on, you and I, if they got us that far, Father, kill them all. <laughs> Destroy them and get me out of here. We wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Forgive them, for they don't know what they do. What do you mean they don't know what they're doing? They know what they're doing. <laughs> Come on, let's be real about this. You don't think they knew what they were doing? Of course they knew what they were doing. But they didn't understand the true influence of what they were doing. See, they didn't understand the influence behind them. See, we're so quickly to judge without realizing the influence. Amen? That's what you and I are to discern. See, reaching the, the master's level is mastering discernment. Besides mastering your tongue. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 
First Peter chapter 5 and verse something. Verse 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Likewise, you what? Younger people. Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, humbleness. Why? Because God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. In other words, he makes a way of escape for them. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the who? Devil and demons walk about like a roaring lion, seeking whom they may devour or provoke or entice. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith, which is your connection to God's presence. Knowing that the same sufferings, hello, are what? Experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So everybody goes through the same training. Different levels sometimes. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Are you ready for this? What he's going to re re release here. <clears throat> now, in the body of Christ, there's a five-fold ministry. <clears throat> but there's also a five-fold ministry of the new creation. It's a ministry to the new man. It's to reach the master's level of like-minded with Christ. And he's going to explain it right here. And he says right here, are you ready? But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have what? Suffered is number one. So you're going to go through suffering. This is a part of the new creation ministry. What's that? That's trials, tribulations. You're going to count it all joy. He's, he's trying to see if you're going to maintain peace, joy, and righteousness. He's trying to see if you're going to maintain the character of Christ. He wants to see this. Amen. This is how he promotes. Amen? Amen? The second one is perfecting. Perfecting. So the first one is suffering. You're going to go through suffering. You're going to go through perfecting. Why? Look at how many of you all know that you've ever heard the saying, learn by your mistakes. That's called perfecting. And then he calls establishing. Establishing is utilizing the things that God has given you. Strengthening. Well, our strength comes from the presence of the Lord. That means you must maintain the connection to God's presence. Strengthening. You know, and as you go through stuff, you strengthen, you become more strong. You become, you become stronger in something. It's, in other words, how much you practice it, you become stronger in it. And then he says, and uh, the fifth one is settling you. Settling you. Does everybody see that? Settling you. Everyone said, settle me. Settle. settle. Not able to be moved. Amen. You're not able to be provoked. Amen. You're not going to be overtaken. You're not going to fall in a flesh out position. Amen? Because the devil looks to provoke, entice, mislead, and disconnect. So he can get you into a place of flesh out. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus prevailed and breached all levels to become the master and went before us so we just have to follow his example. That's all we got to do is follow his example. He went through it all so you and I can just follow the example. Again, we talked about the three levels of the tabernacle. Three, these are, those are three-dimensional parallel realms. Remember, Paul was taken up to the what? Third heaven. Amen? Dimensional parallel realms. First, second, and third heavens. Jesus was challenged at every other area. And you and I will be challenged at every level. Amen. Amen? He challenges us in all things. Listen, we were at a, uh, an outreach yesterday. And we were handing out 
prayer booklets and and we were putting people on the motorcycle and taking pictures of them and they were selling water for life and it was real there was it was just real blessing and and this one and, and this one guy come up he was an elderly man and uh hand him a, a wanted to hand him a prayer booklet and and just said you know something about jesus and he, he just challenged me tremendously he, he didn't his whole focus first of all was what he did his, his world war i don't know one i don't know <laughs> but anyways but he was in the military he's talking about all of these things or whatever and uh you know i i held as long as i could to respect the elder <laughs> And I kept thinking, man, I want to tell this guy, what I want to tell this guy, you got a demon. It's called religious. But I didn't because I wanted to respect him. And because he, he was in the war, he did all kinds of things. And I, you know, I was holding my best to uh, not disrespect him because I knew it wouldn't please God either. Uh, and again, it was, it was a part of my training yesterday. He tried to challenge me. And he wanted, his first question was, uh, where was. Christianity first preacher, who, who got put, some country, like who gives a hoot? And that's what I said. I said, man, it doesn't matter about all that stuff. It's matters about your relationship with the Lord. So finally, it, it got enough to where I just took the, the word, I mean, the prayer booklet and started waving it in his face. <laughs> saying, Man, this is not about religious, brother. That's religious breath. And then I just walked away, you know. I forgave him, I blessed him, and that was it. But he didn't understand it. He was bound by a demon or religion. But again, I didn't want to disrespect him as much as I could. So I just, that was my way out. <laughs> I was waving. So I, <laughs> I took the prayer booklet and just waved. I'm thinking, man, this is religious breath. I don't want to hear no more of this stuff. And walked away. You know why? Because one of the things is what you sow is what you reap. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Amen? Amen? If I got that goofy and religious, I'd hope he'd do that to me too. <laughs> but praise God. Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> but we had a good time. Planted a lot of seeds. Oh, Hallelujah. You know, one of the things the enemy wants to do is always hold you in unforgiveness. Amen. Unforgiveness. That's why Jesus said, you got to forgive everyone or you won't be forgiven. Amen. Listen, I forgive everyone, but I don't hang with everyone. Amen. Amen? It says you'll know them by their fruit. But it's fruits of wickedness. It's fruits of sin. Does everybody understand that? It's fruits of sin. Somebody might not be a good baseball player or football player or tennis player, but it doesn't mean I, I don't love them. Why? I'm not looking at abilities. I'm looking at get character. Does, does, everybody, does everybody understand it? That's different. It's not about ability. It's about character. That's what we look at. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43. Remember, what are we trying to do? Reach the master's level. Amen. You have heard that it was what? Said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, God has a way of twisting everything around, man, you know. But I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Okay, that's reaching the master's level. Amen. That you may be what? Sons of your father in heaven. Sons and daughters of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you only... What reward do you have? Amen. Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore you shall be perfect. Just like your Father in heaven is perfect. That means reaching 
the master's level. Amen? Reaching the master's level. You shall be perfect or master your, your, de your own death and conduct. Why? So the conduct of Christ can come forth. In Isaiah 26, Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Amen. Would you speak it with me? You will keep him in what? Perfect peace. Whose what? Mine has stayed on you because he what? Trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength, powerful, peace, perfect peace, whose minds and thoughts are connected to the words of Jesus. And trust, what are you going to trust? Trust that he's going to manifest. You're going to trust him in everything. Listen, trust will manifest in your heart. If your heart is hardened, trust will not manifest. You'll walk in fear. Amen? Trust will manifest in your heart, and it will bring strength to reach in the master's level. This is what we strive for. This is, see, this should be your goal and my goal is to be like Christ. It's not about how much money we make. It's not about how many things we have. It's not how many things we accomplish in the world. It's not how about how many outreaches, how many people God uses us to save. He can use anyone, even a heathen. Everything is about Christ's character. Everything. That's what he wants. Remember, Jesus looks for Jesus. Amen. Amen? And 1 John chapter 4. And we are in such a time right now that we don't want to act like heathens or have a conduct like the ungodly or react like the ungodly. 1 John chapter 4. Why? Because the world is looking at us. Amen? And you can't be one way outside and be another way in your home. God sees it. He knows. It's called hypocrite. He exposed them. And it's a spirit. 1 John chapter 4 verse 17. Everybody there? So we just talked about perfect peace, didn't we? Of those who what? Set their minds, their thoughts on God's words and teachings. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. What does it say? Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so... In other words... He's, he's saying this, that you're going to have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because you acted the way he did. Not that you acted according to the world, but you acted the way he did. Your character was approved by him. Does everybody understand this? So you're living a, an approved character by Christ Jesus, not a disapproved character. <clears throat> there is what? No fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother or sister, he is a what? Liar. For he who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen, how can he say he loves God whom he's not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him 
that he who loves God must love his brethren also. Hello. Perfect love is the master's level where we judge by fruits according to some sin. Does everybody understand that? Not by abilities. We judge by fruits. We judge by character. Forgiving all in those that, you know, every day I, I pray, Lord, I forgive all those who have persecuted me, used me, offended me, rejected me, hurt me, and don't live up to my expectations. Because every one of us has expectations. I have expectations for everyone. And I want them to live up to the expectations of Christ. But when they don't, I forgive them. Amen. Does everybody understand that? You may have expectations according to the way someone should live, work, clean, however it is. We have to forgive them. It doesn't mean that you don't want them to get there. But you hold nothing towards them. Amen? You forgive them. I want to see everyone live up to the expectations of Christ's character. Even myself. And I have to forgive myself because I have high expectations for myself because much is given, much is required. Amen? But there's an area where forgiveness is covered by the blood. It's important. Forgiving all those that don't live up to the expectations of the, or the character of Christ Avoid those willfully sinning, though. Does everybody get it? <laughs> Avoid them that they're willing to sin. If they're willful sin, look at them. They people want to use dope, fornicate, do this. They're not used to Forget it. Go ahead. Go your way. I love you. I forgive you, and I bless you. Hopefully, the coals will come down quick so you'll get it out get out of the life of sin. But I'm not going to hang with them. I'm not going to associate with them. Amen. I'm going to say, the Bible says, depart from evil. So those that are, and if you're approving of them and hoping that they're going to get things right, you're in the wrong. You're to depart from them and have no association with them. Why? Hopefully conviction will come to an end to realize if you reject them, God is rejecting them. Amen? Avoid those willfully sinning, but don't ditch those that haven't reached your level of ability that you expect. when they are still carrying the character of Christ. Amen? Look at we're all going through the process of perfection. We're trying to reach the master's level. Oh, hallelujah. We are striving to reach the master's level till we have nothing left but trust and confidence through faith in the Lord. Psalm 34. Remember, success is taking territory, isn't it? Taking territory. That's what success is, taking territory. Well, you want to take territory in every, wherever you go, you want to take territory. You, you, spiritual warfare. First, you need to take your own territory. Because if you can't take your own territory, you can't take other territory. Psalm 34 and verse 11. Is everybody Okay. Why are we hearing what God is trying to release to us today? Because he's trying to bring things to me and you now. I have shared before that we've entered a seven-year time of plenty. It can get cut short. Anything can happen. But God is trying to bring the kingdom, his character, and prosperity to his people. But those things don't come. You know, even the devil, the word says that the devil blesses the wicked bless the arrogant. So they may be blessed. They can do all that. Look at that. But they take, they try to steal what we have. The, the word says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It doesn't say God comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to bring life and life abundantly. And he does that through manifesting his divine character in me and you. That's his whole focus. That's his greatest desire. It is children are like him and see what he sees. 
that his children have the same attitude, motive, and desires that he does. Mastering the conduct of Christ Jesus. Psalm 34, verse 11. Let's speak it. Come you what? Children. Children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are on all the righteous. <laughs> and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil and cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Wow. The Lord is near to those who have a what? A broken heart that is humble. Humble heart. And save such as have a contrite spirit. In other words, you want to stay connected to the presence of God, you must maintain a humble character. A humble heart. Not hardened. The moment your heart gets hardened, there's a disconnect. Humble. Humble attitude. Humble motives. All of these things are Christ's character in everything we do. It says many of the afflictions are the, of the righteous. Well, righteous is associated with Christ's character and Christ's conduct. But the Lord delivers them out of all of them. If you ain't been delivered them all, because there's something not right happening. Amen? It says he guards all his bones and none of them are broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. And the Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be what? Condemned. Condemned. The fear of the Lord, reverence, honor, and respect is at all times in our life, in everything we do, in every decision we do. It should always be there. Why? Because it is the master's level. That is the master's level of being like-minded, humble spirit. He is near to those who have a humble spirit. Why? Because it's presence is connected Philippians 2 Philippians chapter 2 hallelujah sounds like a day of self-examination why because we want to advance self-examination yeah to reach the master's level. Amen. Philippians 2 verse 1. <clears throat> 1 through 11. Let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. In other words, he's saying, come on, let's get to the master's level. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with him but made himself with no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he did what? He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth, and those under earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I want to close at Psalm 15. In other words, God's desire is that we become like-minded. Listen, works without Christ's character is dead. I'm going to say it again. Works without Christ's character is is dead. God is building character so the world will see him and not us. Psalm 15.
Hallelujah. Let's read it, starting from 1, and we'll close here. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, and who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly, he who works righteousness, and speaks the truth in his heart at self-examination, isn't it? He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. Why? Because they carry, carry the Christ character. doesn't mean they're perfected, amen, but they're striving for Christ's character. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. That's called settled. Settled. Amen? Settled. Oh, hallelujah. And I want to... What are the five-fold ministry of the new creation? Suffering, perfecting, establishing, strengthening, and settling. Let's reach the master's level. Amen? Father, we are honored and blessed for your word that you've released to us today. I apply the blood of Jesus on the seed that's been imparted. Now I'm asking, Lord, that you'll expose us to ourself before you expose us to everyone else. That you'd have mercy upon us and let your grace abound abundantly. And now we exchange our character, Lord, for your character. Our self-righteousness for your righteousness. Our hearts for your hearts. Our will for your will and our thoughts for your thoughts. Our presence for your presence. And our life for for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring tithes or offerings up.